Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? <laughs> Throughout the world, only one company produces all types of business machines and systems, Remington Rand, who now invites you to play What's My Line? <laughs> Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular Broadway columnist, whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, our funny panelist, one of the great names in show business, Mr. Fred Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Dorothy. And at my left, ladies and gentlemen, a young lady who told me that it was so hot today that she saw two policemen following a shady character to get out of the sun. <laughs> and here she is to refute it, Miss Arlene Francis. I accept it, <laughs> gratefully. And on my, or at my left, a gentleman who created and who publishes the marvelous history books for boys and girls, the landmark series, Mr. Bennett Alfred Sir. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ali. On my left, one of the great news analysts of the country, and incidentally, a panel moderator of no mean repute, Mr. John Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We have some summer heat with us, and we're also seeking to put the heat on the panel with some nice people who've come to visit us and brought some interesting occupations with them. We'll also have a famous guest challenger a bit later on, but I think it's time for these expert friends of mine to meet our first challenger tonight. So will you come and sign in, please, sir? Rod? La Rock. No. Rod? Rod Morris. Is that right, sir? <laughs> Actually, what I'd like to do is talk about the weather for about a half an hour, but I don't think we can. Do you? A little too hot for that. A little too hot for that is right. But it's not too hot, if, at least if you don't mind, to take a little hike because my friends on the panel would like to get a closer look at the challenges. So would you just hike down there and back again, please? Where are you from, Mr. Morris? Mr. Daly didn't tell us. He told me not to tell you. Oh, <laughs> oh hello, Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris. Should make this downhill on hot nights. <laughs> All right, Mr. Morris, over here, if you will. And I would explain, panel, that Mr. Morris's residence is not revealed only because we feel it might perhaps give you a little bit too much help in determining exactly what it, do what it is he does. So you're not going to know where he comes from, at least presently. We uh, would ask Mr. Morris if he's familiar with the scoring system. Yes, you know sir. how we score this? Yes. Good. Then let's let the people who are at home and those who are here in the theater with us know what your line is. Mr. Morris is self-employed, and with that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Morris, do you enjoy your work? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, do you do any of it indoors? Yes, ma'am. Could you go out of doors, too, and still be working? No, ma'am. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Do you uh, deal in services, Mr. Morris? Yes. Do uh, people come to you to avail themselves of your service? Yes. You never meet them halfway. They all come to you, huh? <laughs> well, uh, sometimes I meet them halfway or a little better than that once in a while. Really? <laughs> do you, uh, do you, uh, uh, it seems to me, uh, looking at you, that uh, your services w would be more inclined to be on the mental side rather than on the physical. Is yes, that that's true? right. Well, I would say uh, Mr. Morris is being generous, Fred. I would be inclined to give you a no on that. There is certainly some physical functioning in this area and some mental functioning, but not to the extent. Well, isn't the mental predominant? The Beg your pardon? John, I just want to invoke my constitutional privilege. <laughs> I want to invoke the Fifth Amendment at this time <laughs> because uh, anything that you say may incriminate me, I'm sure. <laughs> it is invoked. 
But I don't want you to be misled by this. Actually, there is both a mental and a physical aspect. To well, in the course of, of performing his services, uh, are, are the services uh, educational and instructive? Yes. They are. In other words, you could uh, be a teacher. Yes. Uh, well, the people who come to you, uh, uh, these people who come to you, if, if, uh, if you taught them something, if, uh, after you had taught them something, would they be better qualified to make a living? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, these people who come to you, do they, uh, do they uh, use uh, tools or instruments of any uh, nature? Yes, to a certain extent. Are they pupils? Do you teach them to use a razor or any instrument of that nature? <laughs> Do you have a barber school or anything? No razor. <laughs> no, no, man. Oh, I no didn't razor. mean, I meant uh, Remington Rand razor, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> you no. never had a no for that. <laughs> <laughs> no razor, no barber school. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Well, now, uh, Mr. Morris, you look uh, very bright and shiny and like a capital gain type fellow, but I have an idea you work for a nonprofit making organization. Is that possible? <laughs> no, ma'am. Oh, you're self employed. I didn't hear John say that. I really lost that unnecessarily, John. Do you think you ought to give me another chance? No. Oh, really? That's like <laughs> Three down to seven to go, Mr. Mr. Sir. Mr. Rod Morris, I'm intrigued by the fact that Mr. Daly is withholding the place you come from. Now, uh, why would that give us such a clue? Is it a very well-known place that's known for one particular thing? Well, I wouldn't say for one particular thing. But no. it has a special significance. It's well known, right? but not for one particular thing. Yeah, it is a place well known, and it has an identification with the public that certainly is clear in some degree or another. Is, a, is amusement one of the prime interests of this place? affording amusement to people? Well, uh, you could say that, yes. Would it be uh, anywhere it uh, Las no. Vegas or west of Las Vegas? Could be in that vicinity, yes. Is it in either Nevada or California? It's in one or the other. Oh, <laughs> you <laughs> say <laughs> Which one will I guess, Arlene? Nevada. Is it in Nevada? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> is it in either Las Vegas or Reno? Yes. Is it in Las Vegas? Yes. You know what <laughs> he does. <laughs> Has it something to do with the manipulation of those uh, various uh, gambling paraphernalia that you find out there? Yes. Uh, are you in the croupier family? Well, you could, in a, to a point, yes. Do you run a roulette or a crap game at one of the hotels on the Strip? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, you do work indoors. <coughs> I didn't hear you, ma'am. You do work indoors all yes, the time. Yes, ma'am. You said. Uh, could we have a conference? We he teaches. Have, uh, I'm not teaches 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 with them. Do you, you teach? There's a school oh, for croupiers out there. never to play the field. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you teach gentlemen who preside at gambling tables? Yes, ma'am. I think it's good. <laughs> Rod runs a school for dealers or croupiers. I guess they're interchangeable, aren't they, Rod? All the same. I'd like to all, go. All the same things from Las Vegas. <laughs> I went out there to cover an, one of those atomic bomb tests, and that was very interesting, but I want you to know I found Las Vegas was very interesting, too. <laughs> yes, it is. John, I'd like to ask uh, Rod Morris while we're on, what is the best game to play for the suckers? Which game, is the, <laughs> which game do they get the best break at? Well, I don't believe I... Uh, I would refuse to answer, answer that, that question, question on the ground of something or the other, you well, know? Dorothy's, well, to go Dorothy's back home. going to Las Vegas, and we'd like to no, see her come back with a bundle. Actually, yeah. oh, she's not going yeah. as a sucker. <laughs> well, Rod, I think they want too much information. Instead, I give you our thanks for being a nice guest Thank and you. an interesting guest and what's my line. I tell you. All right, panel, a brilliant beginning. Now let's see what you can do with our second challenger. Will you sign in, please, sir? Bill? Bill Parker, is that right, sir? Mr. Parker, where are you from? 
Hollywood. From Hollywood? So, Fine. I would ask you to take a trip down in front of our stars, even though you live yeah. among so many, and let them get a closer look at you, please. Hello, Mr. Parker. Hello, Mr. Parker. Have you seen Jack Penny recently? the same age group. All right, Mr. Parker, over here, well, please. Sit down. Down. And what did we miss? Arlene, what did we miss? <laughs> Uh, Fred just said, uh, have Mr. you Parker. seen Mr. Betty? And Mr. Parker said, we're not in the same age group. And <laughs> Mr. Allen said, hardly anybody could be as old as that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, Mr. Parker, are you familiar with our scoring system, sir? Yes, I am. Good, then let's let the folks at home, those here with us in the theater, know exactly what your line is. announce that Mr. Parker is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning, moving right up the line. Fred Allen. Uh, John, knowing some of the didos that you cut here every <laughs> Sunday, uh, <laughs> something tells me that Mr. Parker is in the same business that Mr. Morris is in. Waiting for this to happen. Fred, is, your, is your question is Mr. Parker in the in the same business that Mr. Morris is? Uh -huh. That'll make it one down and nothing to I've go. I've done it again. <laughs> All right, Miss Benson. Well, is he in a business quite contrary to the business that Mr. Morris is in? Must be. Let me get changed that. I really said that. Yeah, that's response. very difficult. It is. I understand no. your problem, and I want to redeem you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, don't get much. I have a feeling Mr. Parker works for the law in some way. Do you, Mr. Parker? Yes, I do. He, he arrests look. the man that goes to the school where the croupiers are yeah. <laughs> He's here looking for Mr. Morris, I'm sure. <laughs> he went that way. <laughs> you work for a branch of the law, then? I do. Uh, do you ever wear a uniform in your job? Sometimes. Sometimes? Well, Sometimes. would the uniform be of police stature? Yes. Uh, are you in the arresting business? Sometimes. On occasion? On occasion. You can't stop anybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, you are connected with the police force? With a police force, yes. With a police force? Yeah. Is it a uh, uh, federal police? No. That's two down at eight to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Mr. Parker, there, uh, every studio out in Hollywood has special police force. Would you be connected with any one of the forces that is a connected with one of the big studios, keeps no, people out and things like that? No, Mr. Sir. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. You said that you're connected with the law, Mr. Parker. I am. Then you mean the law of some government, right? I do. Not a studio? No. Uh, is it local government? Yes. Uh, are you um, a rather high officer of a local government? Are you a rather high officer of the local I mean, you're not, you're not uh, let us say, on the patrolman well, level. I will answer that yes, although it is debatable in some circles. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer yes is the correct You answer. have other people under you. I do. Uh, well, are you as high as chief of police? I am. Are you chief of police? Are you? <laughs> That's wonderful. What town would you say it was? I Chief of Police of... Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Well, we'll throw a few <laughs> cards over. <laughs> Fred? Uh, not Hollywood. Not, not Hollywood. Beverly Hills. Los Angeles? Los Angeles is right. <laughs> <laughs> and I would now remind you that you have been talking to the Chief of Police of Los Angeles, California, William H. Parker, the famous technical director on Dragnet. You've oh, seen yes. that name more times, probably, yes, than you've yes. seen your own. Shame on us. And I would say something that we Is will not have you visit us, sir, from so far away and not throw all the cards over. And Chief Parker has asked that uh, what he has won here tonight is goes to the Los Angeles Fire and Police Pension Fund. Is that That's right, right yeah. sir? That's right. And our thanks to you, Chief, for being That's a guest. Right. It was wonderful of you to come and visit. <laughs> nice to see you. In a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest, but first, here's Dick Stark with a word about business machines. This business machine is the convey filer, the most efficient machine ever developed for a large, active card file, created by Remington Rand. Now watch. You just press a button, and in a matter of seconds, there's the tray of cards you want. 
its perfect desk height with plenty of convenient, handy working space. And notice that these trays move either right or left, depending on which way is the quicker route to the center. The convey filer can house up to 200,000 individual records and guides. And it does away with all that walking and stooping and bending, which is so much a part of ordinary filing equipment. Another feature, complete safety for the operator. Drop something or put your hand here, the machine stops, just like that. This, then, is the convey filer. Now, over here, this is the robot Cardex, a visible record file and desk all in one. Press the index key, away slides one tray of records, and out comes the other, just where you want it. Notice that these slides are in perfect position. They're level, firm, just right for quick posting, easy reference. The robot Cardex provides visible signal control for thousands of individual records. It's the perfect machine for sales, inventory, and personnel. The robot Cardex. Now, the convey filer and the robot Cardex are but two of hundreds of record control devices made by Remington Rand. Remember, Remington Rand makes over 20,000 products for the world of business. So no matter how large or small your business needs may be, see your Remington Rand representative first. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. And for this particular part of the program, my colleagues are always blindfolded. The blindfolds are all in place, are they, panel? Yes, yes. Mr. Daly. I wish they were air conditioned. <laughs> Good. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> all right, panel, as you know, in the case of our Mystery Challenger, we have a different form of questioning. You ask a question each in turn, moving clockwise, and let's begin the whole business with Miss Arlene Francis. Well, those whistles weren't the kind that Bela Lugosi gets, so may I ask if you are young and fair and beautiful? Yes, ma'am. Your voice is changing. <laughs> <laughs> was that the mystery guest answering? No, that, I answered that just because I was afraid our mystery guest might feel that modesty would require some qualified reply, and there's no qualification here. All right, Mr. Sir. <laughs> uh, are you a representative of the entertainment industry? Um, yes. Miss Kilgallen? Are you married? No. That's uh, one, <clears throat> one down and nine to go. Mr. Allen? Have you ever been married? That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Well, I should ask, do you hope to be, but I'm not going to. <laughs> She's old enough to be. <laughs> Are you associated with television? Uh-huh. That's why she's not married. <laughs> no Mr. Time. Sir? No uh, time. Are you uh, connected with some regular television show? Uh, yes, I am. Miss Kilgallen? Are you Peggy King? No, Three I'm down and me. seven to go. Sorry. Is your I show... one of the answers. Is your show on a film... Your television show on film? Sorry, I gotta have a conference. <laughs> Hasn't she seen it lately? <laughs> is it still on? Fred, would you ask that question again? Uh, is this uh, young lady's uh, television show on film? Is it a film show or is it a live show? Uh. <laughs> yes or no, live or dead? Uh. Yes, and no. <laughs> uh, at the same time? Uh, no. I, I work a lot. <laughs> what did she say? She works, she a, works lot. a lot. She works live and dead. <laughs> <laughs> Are you finished, Fred? Yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in the nicest possible way. Oh, sure. John Weekend dead. <laughs> John had a lapse, and I got two answers in. Well, I uh, <laughs> detect a quality in your voice that makes me think that you are not alone in the show, as marvelous as you are. You are also associated with probably one of the top comics of the field. Is that correct? Yes. 
It's yours, Bennett. Well, it's mighty cute of you. Uh, is the is the the top comic uh, a man of uh, some proportions? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gilgallan. Have you red hair? Uh huh. Mr. Allen. Are you one of the uh, numerous Meadow sisters? <laughs> Really? Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you know James. the first name? <laughs> <laughs> Audrey. It's Audrey, it's right. <laughs> now, I would, uh, if Miss Audrey will permit, explain the reason that we hesitated somewhat on your question, Fred, about is the program Money on movies. film is that it has not been but it is oh, going I to be, and no. we didn't quite know what to say about it. Because is the it the Honeymooners that will be on film, yes. Audrey? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. That's, yes, uh, we start next week filming it, but you really had me in a spot, Fred, because it's always been live, you know, up to that's now. That's true. Audrey, last time I saw you were going out to burn money. Did you do it that time? Yes, I certainly did. I burned Burning. several million dollars in the uh, Federal Reserve Bank. In Las Vegas? No. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that was the toughest thing I ever had to do. But they the have money. it all cut up first so that it has to be burned. What you know, was that for that program? Names the same that's on another network as they put No, it? this was for a uh, CBS show. Uh, Make the connection. No. no. CBS and all I've forgotten the name of it. That's why we don't get oh, paid. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the actors burn it, the executives yeah. don't. <laughs> Well, as you know, your brother-in-law was for a long time our colleague, and we all uh -huh. have deep affection for him, and he's way out there on the West Coast, and I think perhaps you'll talk to him before we do, so give him our best regards. I certainly Many will. Good to see you. Thank now. you, John. Nice to have had you in What's My Life. Thank you. Will you say good night to you? All right, let's see what we can do with another challenger. The panel is hot this evening. Will you come in and sign in, please? Joan Armstrong, right? Where are you from? Harrison, New York. Harrison, New York. I'm from Harrison, New York. We both live in Harrison. We're Supervisor Sulla's kids. You nervous? You know what her line is, John? <laughs> I know what her line is, and I'm not going to tell you. On, I'll tell you what I would like you to do. Look at the panel, would you please? Because I'm not going to let you take a walk. You come with me. And uh, you sit down here and just uh, answer the one question. Are you familiar with the scoring system that we have, these cards here? Yes, sir. Fine. If you're familiar with that, let's let people at home, our guests here in the theater, know exactly what your line is. Panel, it's Miss Armstrong, and Miss Armstrong is salaried, and let's begin with Bennett Sir. Miss Armstrong, you have a nice scrub, fresh look. I have a feeling you have something to do with schools or children, have you? No. <laughs> uh, small conference. Well, sometimes. Sometimes? Yes, yeah, so you can go ahead. Actually, Bennett, I would say that taking the whole question that a fair answer would be sometimes. But you're, you're not connected in any way officially with the Harrison school system, is that correct? No, I'm not. Uh, you're not still going to school yourself, are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> now, wait a minute, you're not still going now, to I've school, I've forgotten how I put you? that myself. Is that a no <laughs> or a yes? yes she I is am. still going to school, not she says. Sure. So Bennett, yeah, I think I got to know. know. Yeah. Ah, he gets to know. It's funny, I would have worked that out in about a half an hour to give you some more time. One down and nine to go. Miss Kilgallen, about two minutes. Well, do you work in the daytime? Yes. I mean, at, at what we're trying to guess now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you go to school in the daytime, too? Or are we trying to guess a temporary job? Well, it is, in a way, a, a, a summer, summer job. Thing, you know, because there is school to worry about in winter. Uh, is this something that you do indoors? Looks like we're going to have to have another conference. <coughs> John's going to go indoors. Yeah. <laughs> if I were Mrs. Daly, I'd find out what part of Harrison Miss Arnold Two down yeah. and eight. <laughs> I already know. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, is there a product involved in whatever you do at the, during the summer? 
Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. And now, originally, it, Bennett yeah. said schools and children. You answered yes, and we never really got it clear. Do you have anything to do with children? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes. Mostly when they're a little older. <laughs> like a nice, strong 18-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. It's possible? Uh, do you have anything to do at uh, a resort place? Is your job around the beach or anything like that? Yes. Do you save young boys that are in swimming if they're old enough and you don't have to throw them back? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer that question. Do you have anything to do with life sex? Actually, you've got it, Miss Arlene. <laughs> Joan is a life sex. going to rule the time was up, and since I was about to rule the time was up, I'll throw all the cards over. Besides, Supervisor Suller would probably have my skin if I didn't. But Miss Joan, <laughs> thanks for being our guest. Thank it you. was nice to have you on What's My Life. Good night. We'll be back in just a moment, but first, here's a word from Remington Rand. Throughout the world, only one company produces all types of business machines and systems. Remington Rand, creators of over 50 typewriter models, more than 60 kinds of photocopying and microfilming equipment, 80 adding machines and printing calculators, and a complete line of electronic computing systems. Remington Rand, manufacturers of over 20,000 products to serve the world of business. Before our panel says good night, may I remind you to tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time when once again we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And now, a word from next week's sponsors. Can't see me, can you? <laughs> but you know I'm here. And it's that way with wonderful Stop at Lotion Spray Deodorant. You can't see the way Stop at's lotion ingredients soothe your skin. You can't see the way Stoffette stops odor, but you know Stoffette is there by your spotless appearance the whole day through. With Stoffette, poof, there goes perspiration. In fact, one poof is all the proof you need that always effective Stoffette should be your deodorant. Start using Stoffette lotion spray tomorrow. Well, I must say, panel, we've been giving you such a rough time of late. I think it should be noted for the record that tonight you cleaned the bases, every single one you got, and congratulations. <coughs> and so until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, John. Good night, Fred. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene. Good night. Good night, good night Bennett. I hear the temperature's going down to 100 tomorrow, John. Good night. <laughs> you stop spreading these base rumors around this part of the country. Good night, and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What? My life. <laughs> Transportation for What's My Line is arranged through American Airlines, America's leading airline, serving 77 major cities throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production in association with the CBS Television Network.